You're listening to Big World Network. Incubus, Season 5, Episode 4. Written and read by Amanda Mavison. Nathan accepted Alex's compromise of not killing her if he got a look at the picture she had taken on her camera phone, though she refused to delete it. Evidential proof, she had said. Nathan did have to admit that the picture of him and Sasha intimately connected in the hallway was pretty hot, but it wouldn't stop him from plotting something of Alex's demise later, even if she had been kind enough to forward the picture to his phone. Jim and Sasha, both still shirtless and paint-speckled, were enjoying a final drink at the bar before heading up to bed. Nathan made his way to the jukebox. "'You break it, you!' Alex trailed, tilting her head. "'Actually, you break it, and I'll kill you, so have fun!' She flashed Nathan a smile before continuing the conversation she had been having with Jim and Sasha. Nathan resented the idea that he couldn't handle New Age technology. He just wasn't very fond of it, or used it all that much aside from his own camera phone and the wonders of Google. Besides, it was a touch screen. He couldn't break it. Peering at the screen, Nathan considered his choices a moment before even attempting a search. He felt like something fun. Then it clicked. Just so long as this hunk of junk had the Blue Swede version, and not just the B.J. Thomas or, God forbid, Ario Speedwagon. A grin spread over Nathan's face as he found what he was looking for, and clicked the song title. The familiar a cappella part he loved so much, sounding gloriously over the speakers. From back at the bar, Nathan heard Alex laugh. Of course you like this version, she said. It's not hooked on a feeling without the Ugachakas, Nathan said in his defense, and then proceeded to bob his head to the music and sing along as the first verse began. He started advancing on the bar toward Jim and Sasha's stools, both of whom looked varyingly amused. Nathan continued bobbing his head and singing loudly, mock dancing as best he could in his current state of injured. Sasha joined Nathan as the song broke into its chorus, Nathan was so caught up in the song that he wasn't really thinking about the words he was about to sing, looking adoringly at Sasha while he did so, until, "'That you're in love with me!' passed his lips. Sasha looked so genuinely happy, though, and not because of any signals getting crossed, but because Nathan was getting them to goof around and finally really relax." Nathan decided to go with it, and grabbed both brother and friend by the arms, almost causing Jim to drop his drink, and pulled them out onto the floor. Sasha got the message, and more than happily started moving his hips to the music, and gesturing Nathan closer. Jim was more reluctant, and looked unsurprisingly awkward, until Alex came out from behind the bar and grabbed his hand. Loosening up wasn't something Jim did any more often than he danced, but Nathan saw the genuine smile on his brother's face as he spun Alex around in a twirl. Sasha surprised Nathan as warm hands rested just at the sides of his hips, and the incubus danced his own hips closer. Nathan looked away from Jim and Alex to meet Brilliant Blue, and he had to smile. They deserve to be ridiculous more often, all of them. And if none of the others were going to instigate things, then Nathan would always more than willingly pick up the slack. A loud laugh broke free from Sasha as he glanced at Jim's less-than-coordinated attempts at dancing. Sasha's hands left Nathan's hips, and the redhead danced his way over to Jim, getting between him and Alex, and grabbing Jim's hips instead. Jim looked so startled, Nathan had to laugh, watching as Sasha tried to get across to Jim that moving your hips and dancing to the beat should not look like you're having a spasm. In turn, Alex and Nathan danced their way over to each other. Soon all of them were laughing as the chorus repeated yet again, Jim especially, with Sasha's attentions on him, and before long it wasn't really clear or important who was dancing with whom. At one point, Nathan grabbed Jim's hand and spun him around, calling over the music, "'You even twirl like a girl!' To which Jim scowled and immediately spun Nathan to twirl right into Sasha, 
who gladly caught him. It took Nathan some time to remove himself of his shirt and jeans, leaving just his boxer briefs as he waited for Sasha to get out of the shower. None of Nathan's bandages had bled through since Jim reapplied them, but he was not oblivious to how sore he was and how slowly he was moving. He imagined his scars would be worse now with how the healing process had been interrupted, but he didn't care much about vanity. He was grateful for the pain pills he had taken before they left the bar, and thought the new dose might finally be kicking in as he lay back on the bed. Nathan did feel a little groggy, but he couldn't imagine dozing off, especially not after Sasha came out of the bathroom, in nothing but a loosely draped towel. The incubus's hair was wet, and it clung to his cheeks and forehead. He looked flush from the hot water, which matched his heated expression. Nathan didn't have time, or desire, to protest before Sasha came straight for him on the bed just as he was, clad in only the towel. Of course it was a very damp towel, so Nathan grabbed the corner where Sasha had folded it closed as the incubus leaned over him for a kiss. "'Dude, you're all soggy,' Nathan managed around mouthfuls of Sasha's lips. "'Let me help with that.' He couldn't help grinning within their lip-lock as he tugged the corner of the towel free and tore it from Sasha to the floor. Nathan had been looking forward to this. He could admit that as much as it sometimes still pinched his gut with anxiety. He just couldn't care about fear when everything Sasha did to him, every kiss, every touch, felt so good. Besides, their first encounter had ended far too unfairly, thanks to Gabriel. This time Nathan wanted to fall asleep and wake up again, with Sasha beside him. He had been lying on top of the covers, and Sasha was crouched over him now, a knee on either side of Nathan's hips, with telling heat that pressed against Nathan's thigh and twitched as they kissed. Nathan hated that their chests were so far apart, and reached his arms around Sasha's back to pull the redhead down. Realization hit Nathan before he could complete the act. Damn it, he cursed. What? Nathan looked up into the blue eyes staring down at him, so bright, so beautiful. I wanted to... He ran his hands over Sasha's back, and raised his hips a little to express what he meant. A chuckle fell from Sasha's lips. "'We can work around this,' he said, touching a hand to Nathan's chest gently, and tracing his fingers over the bandages around Nathan's ever-present necklace. "'Besides, I have plans for you, Mr. Greer. I want you to enjoy yourself. So lie back and let me do all the work.' "'Sounds pretty kinky,' Nathan said, his eagerness returning. "'You're not going to tie me to the bed, are you?' Sasha's grin widened. We'll add that to the list. Just not tonight. List? All the things I want to do to you, Nathan, can't possibly happen in one night. But I'll get to them all eventually. You can count on it. Sasha sealed his promise with a sudden, deep kiss that pressed Nathan's head back into the pillow. Nathan thought maybe he felt the hint of fangs, and it made a growl build in his throat for a change. Once Sasha pulled from their kiss, he started to trail his lips down Nathan's jaw, down his neck, then worked his way back up again to Nathan's ear and lapped slowly at the cartilage. Nathan shivered. His ears had always been a sensitive spot. He didn't doubt that Sasha would find all of his sensitive areas. Sasha kept going, back down Nathan's neck to his collarbone. Unconsciously, Nathan lifted his chest up toward Sasha, in some vain attempt to get closer, and his wounds pressed hard against firm muscle. He hissed with the sudden sting, and fell back flat to the bed. "'Don't do that, then,' Sasha admonished. "'Like I can help it,' Nathan growled. He just wanted to be closer. He hated that there had to be a barrier between them. "'Don't worry, Nathan. Just leave it to me,' Sasha promised." Nathan hissed again, this time because Sasha had bitten firmly into his pulse point, holding back just enough to make it that wonderful sensation between pleasure and pain. After some further attention to Nathan's neck, Sasha continued his descent, and Nathan started to figure out where this was heading. It made the heat pooling in his gut boil a little hotter. 
Sasha's lips, those soft, wonderful lips on Nathan's skin, were such a promising tease. They trailed down Nathan's stomach to his hips, kissing, licking, nipping at the bone, and obviously wanting to go lower, if not for one other barrier. Sasha had already tugged Nathan's shorts down a little while he was toying around Nathan's hips, but they really needed to go. Nathan almost laughed at how Sasha had to lift the elastic band over his erection, and then the shorts were down Nathan's legs and gone, with Sasha's lips returning to where they had left off on Nathan's skin. The way Sasha kissed and nipped again further down to Nathan's thighs had Nathan bucking his hips. His eyes closed as Sasha took another playful bite at his inner thigh— but they sprang open very quickly when he felt a wet tongue start at the base of his cock and lick all the way up to the tip. Nathan moaned. Then Sasha started trailing up Nathan's body again, kissing and gently biting his way up Nathan's stomach. Nathan gasped, because as Sasha traveled further up his body, Nathan's cock dragged along Sasha's chest, sending little tremors down to Nathan's feet. Nathan knew that every single part of this was planned, on purpose, and that just made him harden further. "'You're evil,' Nathan said, as Sasha bit sharply into his neck again, sucking hard enough to leave a mark. "'You love it,' Sasha whispered back. "'True, but I'll sure as hell start complaining if you don't get back to it.' Nathan lifted his hips a little to stress his point, and his erection brushed past Sasha's, the brief friction and heat making both of them gasp. A devilish look overtook Sasha's features, and Nathan grinned, knowing what he was in for and more than willing. Sasha kissed down Nathan's body again, faster this time, his nips briefer but harder, until he reached coarse hair and lifted his head up. Looking down his body, Nathan could see how close Sasha's lips were to just being on him, and something like a whine left his throat before he could stop it. It was Sasha's tongue that swiped out first, not his lips, licking just around the head. The incubus was definitely going to be the death of Nathan. He bit back an unmanly yelp when those lips finally descended to join Sasha's skilled tongue. Nathan pressed his head back into the pillow, his hips subtly arching into the feeling of Sasha's warm mouth. Sasha took Nathan deep into the back of his throat, only to pull completely away, and then run his hand over where his mouth had been, pumping Nathan lightly. He licked Nathan's full length, focusing on the head, and then took Nathan in completely again, before repeating the process. Nathan's whole body was trembling by the time Sasha slithered back up to his lips and kissed him hard. He had had no release, left weeping and pulsing, so totally driven mad that he would have done anything Sasha asked of him just then. But Sasha didn't ask. He just whispered against Nathan's lips, "'I love you,' and stared adoringly into Nathan's eyes." The pleasure Nathan had been feeling choked in his throat. "'Don't say that,' he said, before he could think about how awful a comeback it was. Sasha didn't look devastated, though, only confused. "'Why not? Nathan, I'm not going to be angry if you don't say it back. I understand. I don't need you to say it back.' "'Sure you do,' Nathan said miserably, hating that he was spoiling the moment, but unable to stop himself from speaking on. "'The person who says it always needs to hear it said back. It's a fucking rule or something. I'm just a jackass.' "'Well, yeah,' Sasha agreed with a grin. "'But I can wait.' Nathan opened his mouth to dissent, but Sasha pushed on. "'And don't you dare say we don't have time. We do.' I'll make sure of it. I'll make the time. No dark she is ever going to lay their hands on you, Nathan. That's my job, he added with another smirk. If you still want me. I want you, Nathan said, as heartfelt as if he had said the other words, the harder, meaningful ones. I want you now, he stressed, accentuating that with another buck of his hips, just wanting to get past this now and back to where things made sense for him. Then a thought occurred to him. We can do this, right? What do you mean? 
well, it's the gatehouse. Faye can't use powers here. But if you feed, won't you get blasted across the room just as we're getting to the good part? Sasha laughed. We're safe, Nathan. The gatehouse wards only prevent hostile powers. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be able to hold a glamour in here. As long as you're willing, there won't be any interruptions. Nathan nodded. Willing wasn't a problem. Sasha smiled, licked his lips, and started to shift a knee between Nathan's legs. Bells went off in Nathan's head immediately. He hadn't really thought about positions while under the ministrations of an incubus's lips and tongue, but now it had been made quite clear that Sasha planned to switch things up from last time. That was only fair, Nathan told himself. He just had never done that before. Okay, so just so you know, Nathan found himself saying in an awful panicked voice, girls have played around down there and everything, and I've always enjoyed it, but that's not the same as what you're planning. No, Sasha said slowly, his eyes heavy-lidded. Definitely not the same. Just relax, Nathan. You trust me, right? He situated himself between Nathan's legs and kissed him gently on the cheek. Nathan told himself to calm down. Just calm down. This is Sasha. Yeah, I trust you. Then there's nothing to worry about. Sasha reached over the side of the bed for his bag, which Nathan now realized had been strategically placed, and came back with a small bottle. Nathan stared at it for a moment as if he didn't know what it was, though of course he did, and was thankful for its presence. Just because I don't really need any for myself doesn't mean I don't keep some with me, Sasha said. He maintained his calm, sweet smile as he poured some of the smooth liquid into his palm. It was familiar at first, a coaxing finger, slippery and gently stretching him. Nathan wasn't lying when he said he liked the way that felt when a girl did it. He knew there were lots of nerves in there, knew there obviously had to be a reason why gay men enjoyed what they did, and why women allowed men to have sex with them that way, too. Sasha had sure seemed to enjoy it. It didn't have to be scary. It wasn't scary. It felt good. It was just the damn machismo telling Nathan that he was a man, damn it, and no one was allowed to do this. Relax, Sasha said again, more than likely reading Nathan's anxiety like an open book. There's no such thing as bad sex with an incubus, you know, he added teasingly. Nathan had to smile. He didn't doubt that, and the more he relaxed, the better it felt, those sensitive nerves being touched and pressed and stretched. Sasha knew what he was doing, to the point where Nathan barely even realized when there were two fingers instead of one, until he arched unconsciously to bring Sasha in deeper. Nathan was still so hard, unsatisfied, and his body tingled from over-sensation. He had to wonder if Sasha was helping things along at all with pheromones. Nathan couldn't say he'd mind all that much. Moans were spilling from Nathan's throat before he knew what was happening. It frightened him a little how each stroke of Sasha's fingers, along that certain curve inside of him, pulled such obscene noises from his throat, sending warm pulses of pleasure throughout his body and straight to his groin. But he wasn't about to let fear stop him now, not when he already longed for the finale. Sasha, Nathan mewled, the same way he remembered Sasha pleading with him. Just, damn it, baby, please. Nathan, do you know what hearing you say that does to me? Sasha breathed, staring hungrily down at Nathan's body, and then back up into his eyes. Nathan nodded. Actually, he wasn't sure if it was that he had said please, or that he had just called Sasha baby, but he'd gladly say both again. He wanted to watch Sasha's expression, wanted to lose himself in how Sasha lost himself in him. There was a slight sting at the difference in pressure when Sasha finally positioned himself and began to push in. But he was careful, slow, and the relief and ecstasy on Sasha's face was enough to make Nathan forget about pain anywhere on his body. He just wished he could pull Sasha closer. Remembering how good it had felt the other way around, Nathan lifted his legs and wrapped them around Sasha's back as the incubus started thrusting. 
Some glorious place inside of Nathan was struck, and he saw stars for a minute, unable to do anything but moan into Sasha's movements. Nathan pressed a hand to Sasha's chest, feeling the grooves of Sasha's faint scar, such a near match to Nathan's mark, and the only imperfection on the incubus's body. Nathan snickered to himself, as he remembered there was one other imperfection. He slid his hand to Sasha's smooth ass, just barely able to feel where the tiny clover tattoo was carved into Sasha's cheek. Another thrust, and Nathan moaned far too loudly to be decent. It felt amazing to be connected this way. Surreal. Nathan wasn't feeling any pain at all anymore, which actually gave him pause. Sex always felt good, but this was different. Not just the sensation itself, since Nathan had never been in this position before, but because of something else. Something so unique and intense that Nathan recognized it immediately. You... you're doing something to me, Nathan gasped. I thought that was obvious, Sasha replied with a grin, lips trembling as he hovered over Nathan, careful not to pull too close and meet their chests together. No, Nathan shook his head. Cheating, he finished, one hand tied on Sasha's shoulder, while the other pointed accusingly in Sasha's face. Sasha bit his lip like a guilty child. It's not really cheating, if it's my nature. I didn't want to scare you before. I wanted the first time to be normal. But I don't want to hold back with you, Nathan. I always hold back with the others. I, I've had to, but not with you. I want you to feel this, what I feel. Everything you make me feel, I want you to know. I want you to be part of this with me. The circuit, Nathan thought. Sasha wasn't just feeding from Nathan and being particularly skillful in the fucking department. He was channeling the feeding back to Nathan, opening the circuit for Nathan to feel too. It had brought Nathan to his knees once before, but this was so different. He was in the circuit at the same time as he was feeling it bounced back to him, literally feeling Sasha's hands, Sasha's thrusts, Sasha's loving kiss pressed into his forehead, but also feeling waves of pleasure in a way only Sasha could feel. Sasha didn't have to pretend with him. Sasha didn't have to hold back. It was so all-consuming, growing within Nathan as their climaxes built upon each other, that there was nothing but constant, pure sexual energy traveling through him and making him ache for more. His hips moved up toward Sasha's, his heels digging into Sasha's back, just as Sasha had done to him, pulling them more deeply together. Sasha's kisses felt like fire, his hands blazing over Nathan's body, and the heat between them where their bodies connected? Fuck! It was almost too much. Nathan was moaning and gasping every other second, lost in the whole thing. And he loved it. Because it was Sasha. Him and Sasha caught in this circuit that gave Sasha life and made Nathan quiver. God, yes, Nathan loved it. He loved... He... Loved. Nathan felt blinded as he came, paralyzed. The sensations were still running through him, as Sasha built to his own end, and finally came as well. Nathan was shaking when Sasha pulled out of him, pulled away, and grabbed the towel from the floor to wipe them both clean. Even the touch of the towel made Nathan shiver a little. He was still overly sensitized. He wondered how long it would take for him to come down from whatever high this was. Just give it a few minutes, Sasha said close beside Nathan's ear. I'm sure it's a little jarring. I've never done that with anyone before. Was it too much? Was it okay? At first Nathan didn't quite understand why Sasha sounded worried. Maybe Nathan would have liked a warning first, but he sure as hell wasn't going to be upset with the incubus for giving him the most amazing sexual experience of his life. Again. Too much? Nathan questioned. Well, I don't think I can feel my feet, but that was pretty fucking incredible. I think I might implode if you do that every time, though, just so you know. Sasha's laughter responded, and Nathan started to come back to himself enough to feel the bed beneath him again, and see that Sasha was lying next to him, propped up to look down at him with those vivid blue eyes. Feeling better then, Nathan? 
the incubus asked. Nathan reached a hand up to grab the back of Sasha's neck and pulled the incubus down into a slow kiss. Definitely better. You're listening to Big World Network.